guys! Today I actually wanted to do something a little different and talk to you guys about Hackintoshing versus the new iMac that's coming out and which one you should buy. You take you just do 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 splash. I hope you guys all know about what happened the other day with the Apple event. If you do not, I feel bad for you because I absolutely adored the Apple event. That is because I'm an Apple nerd. But anyway, I like knowing what's going on anyways in the tech world, and I was really excited. Not for the 13 inch retina, as you guys must know by now. I was really excited for the mini iPad or iPad mini, the Mac mini, whatever. And that brings us to the iMac. The iMac was the most exciting thing, in my opinion, at the Apple event, and it is something that I am completely drooling over. Not because of the internals, but because of the display and the thinness of the damn thing. Have you seen that thing? It's a pencil thickness! Are you kidding me? It is beautiful. I don't even understand how there's a computer in there. Never mind the screen. I can't even fathom it. It hurts my brain. But enough of that nerdgasm, I want to get into the benefits of Hackintoshing and the benefits of having an iMac and what one is the best for you. So let's start off with the iMac, shall we, since we already have. So the iMac is rocking a beautiful display. So right out the door, I am going to say that I feel that the pricing for the iMac is worth it. The pricing for other computers such as MacBooks and stuff, I am not so convinced. But the pricing for the iMac because of the display and the all-in-one one technology and the beautifulness that is the actual computer itself, I do feel that the iMac is pretty fairly priced. However, that price tag is quite expensive if you look at actual monies. So number one, I feel that the iMac would be worth it if you have the cash for it. Because if you don't have the moolahs, there's no point in even looking into it, right? And number two would be the fact that it is an all-in-one system. I think that the all-in-one design is absolutely beautiful and I think that it is actually the computer of our age. All-in-one systems are becoming more compact, easier to use, less cables and such. I just feel that all-in-one package is very beautiful. Not to mention the iMac, I think, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it, is the best looking all-in-one computer system on the market, especially with the new design. Oh my goodness. So if you hate clutter and you hate wires, it's a good option for you there. Or if you like pretty computers, that's just, yeah, that's a check mark there for shizzle. And number three, if you're the type of person that doesn't really like to take things apart, doesn't like to upgrade your system really, and is okay with having a computer for a certain amount of years, and I would suggest if you are that kind of person and if you do have the money for it, to invest in putting the top amount of stuff in the computer because it cannot be taken apart. I do believe this new iMac coming out can't be taken apart. It is actually soldered together like all the other computers coming out at this particular moment in time other than, yeah, you guys know all that. So that is a really important thing to note. Note that you are going to be stuck with 8 gigs of RAM. You cannot upgrade once you actually get that computer shipped to your house unless you are okay with cutting open the back and even if you do that, I highly don't think that would do anything for you, so I would highly suggest actually making sure you have enough RAM and it's going to be enough for you. And unfortunately, as soon as you start adding Apple RAM, it's a bit of a piss off because it's a lot more money than what it would be if you went out and bought sticks of RAM. But again, going back to number one, if you can afford it, I would definitely bump up your specs to as much as you can and that computer will last you quite a while. Also number four, the benefit of having the iMac is you have a legitimate Apple product so you can put a warranty on it and be actually helped by Apple. Something goes wrong and you put Apple Care on your system, you are good to go, bring it in, they'll fix it for you or give you a new one on the spot. It is just all around a great service to have. Not to mention you don't get kernel panics and stuff that you do get with Hackintoshing. And now on to Hackintoshes. Now most of you guys know, I think you all know, maybe not my new viewers, but anyways, I do have a Hackintosh and that I run as my main system. It is currently running the 2600K Intel Core i7 processor. It is a Sandy Bridge processor. I didn't go with Ivy Bridge because at the time it was kind of iffy and I didn't really want to risk it. Sandy Bridge had good reports on it and the CPU is actually a great CPU. So I had no problem going with the Sandy Bridge. This makes my system extremely fast, not to mention 
function, I can add whatever components I want into it. So number one would be cost. Cost of Hackintoshing is a lot cheaper than buying an iMac. A lot cheaper. And you can get a lot more power. My system, I do believe, is a $1,200 system that I have accumulated over time. It is incredibly fast. It scores a whopping $1,400 in Geekbench, which is crazy crazy fast and helps me with computer rendering and graphics and all that stuff. I really don't have any issues with performance. And number two, which also saves you money, is the fact that you can actually swap out parts in your system. It is not like an iMac where you can't pry apart the glass and the aluminum. You can actually take apart your system, add better cooling, add more RAM, add SSDs, add hard drives. You can change out your CPU if your computer's too slow. It is a great way to upgrade your system without shelling out a ton of money at a time. And also, if you don't have a lot of money up front, you can kind of, you know, not get 16 gigabytes of RAM. Get 8 gigabytes of RAM. Don't get an SSD right up front. Get a black Cavalier drive or a blue Cavalier drive. It is up to you what you want to put in there as long as they correspond with the Tony Mac website. I would only recommend doing that following the Tony Mac website for if you're building a Hackintosh and making sure you have the proper hardware. Number three, with those parts, you can make your computer a ton faster than what the iMacs are now. And number three, you can make your system much, much faster than you can the iMac. I mean, you can't even compare the two. The iMac is an extremely fast system, but you can make your Hackintosh much faster for way less money. In my opinion, it is a power machine and you can't really beat it with the iMac right now. You can't, you can't beat the speeds. And number four, Hackintosh is for you if you are good with computers. If you can take apart computers, put them together, you understand how that all works, you understand how to do BIOS and all that stuff, it would be simple for you to actually do Hackintoshing. If you don't know that kind of stuff, it is going to be more difficult for you to Hackintosh and you're probably better off going with the iMac. So that is something that you guys do need to know that it isn't the easiest thing to do in the world and if you don't have knowledge of computers, it probably will be hard for you. And if you do really want to Hackintosh, you feel it's the best thing for you, you learn a lot if you put them together with somebody else that does know what they're doing and you pay attention to what they're doing and you follow instructions, you will learn and so with that knowledge you can change out parts later and make your system faster and just learn how to actually put together computers. Not shabby knowledge to have. Not shabby knowledge to have indeed. So overall, those are the reasons why you should go with an iMac or with a Hackintosh. Now let's say to sum up everything, the biggest thing for me with Hackintoshing, like I said, if you are good with computers, that is the only reason I would go with a Hackintosh. Know that if you are Hackintoshing, your computer is not supported by Apple, even if you are using a actual vanilla install, which is using an actual retail disk, or in these days now, it's a thumb drive. You are not supported by Apple. You are in on your own. You can also get parts and put everything together, and it could not function properly. It could just be like, screw you, I don't like it. it is a lot of work putting a Hackintosh together. It can go really simply or it can go really wrong and then you're stuck with a whole bunch of computer parts and if you want to take them back you have to pay a restocking fee and it's not nice. It is not a nice experience if your parts don't work. So if you are Hackintoshing you are taking a huge risk. Whereas you can go to the store and you can buy an iMac and it will work right out of the box. No questions asked. Be running Mac OS X. You're good to go. The mountain Lion is fantabulous awesome apps and so on and so forth. So there is a premium with that. So it's really up to you guys. In my personal opinion, I like having a Hackintosh for my main system because I can make my, swap my parts out and such, but that's because I pretty much know what I'm doing to a certain degree and I have people in my life that do have a really, really good understanding of computers and I'm very grateful for that. But if I didn't, I would definitely go with an iMac. So that is my point of view on the two computers. And if you are picking up a 27 inch iMac, let me know down below. We're 21 and a half inch, the new iMac's coming out. They are pretty schnazzy looking. Um, and I would be interested to hear that. Also, if you have Hackintosh, or you like Hackintoshing, or you plan on Hackintoshing, you can comment down below too. Always like talking with you guys. And until next time, camera, toodles. YouTube, this is Techie Jess coming at ya, and I wanted to chat to you guys about the new Retina MacBook Pro that came out and how I think it's a failure.